Here we go. Hey guys, we've got another fantastic pistol review for you today. We're gonna to be looking at something that's near and dear to my heart, another Beretta 92. And this is from our friend, Ernest Langdon, Langdon of Langdon Tactical Technologies. Now, in the past, we've shied away from a lot of reviews. I personally felt there was just so many out there, but people have liked the style of review that we've put out there, so we're gonna probably do some more. This gun, guys, right out of the box makes me almost want to weep. I almost want to weep. You guys that have followed us for a while or have trained with us know that I am a fan of the 92 pistols. And if you don't know who Ernest Langdon is, let's start out talking a bit about him. So Ernest, veteran Marine, uh, he was Marine sniper. He has literally taught and been either taught or been to every school you could think of. And if you Google him, you'll see this stuff. He was uh, went to Ranger School, went to Airborne School, did all of that stuff, was in multiple combat deployments, and served in as an instructor in some of the highest level schools across the country. I'm not talking about dudes shooting into sand berms. I'm talking about training some of the most elite war fighters on the planet, as well as some super high level police agencies and anti-terrorism agencies. In addition to that, so this is what makes Ernest so cool, is he's got that whole side of his, of his life, of his life experience. Well, he's also a world and national champion pistol shooter. So he holds the distinction of being a USPSA Grandmaster. For those of you that don't know what that is, there's a little handful of people on the entire planet that can shoot like that. It basically makes you a Jedi genius shooting master god with a gun. And he's one of them. So he's got, I think, I'm looking it up here, I don't want to misquote it, 10 national titles and 2 world titles. As a USPSA shooter, that means you can run a gun. So I want to make sure you guys understand this isn't just some gun builder, this guy knows the fighting arts and he's been there done that as well as the competition side so this gun was built to be end all fighting tool i want you to make sure you understand who you know who Ernest is check him out too if you're looking to train so let's talk about the gun itself so this frame of this gun started life as an m9 a1 frame so you've got the rail you've got a good heavy solid frame and this is the vertex slide so if you saw my Wilson combat gun, that was the Brigadier slide, slightly heavier. And why Ernest said he chose this slide, he felt that the diminished mass, the lighter bit of mass uh, involved in this slide versus the Brig Tac slide, the Brigadier slide, that heavier slide, was better uh, control of that sight picture. With less mass moving around, his theory is uh, that you've got less sight bounce as that slide is reciprocating forward and back uh, during the cycling of the gun. There's so much stuff that he did to this gun that makes it awesome, but there's some stuff that they stayed away from because he said they wanted to control cost. They didn't want to make this thing some $3,000 pistol. You can basically buy this gun right here off of his website for about a thousand bucks. To some people that sounds like a lot of money. You're talking about a completely tuned, ready to go to war or compete at a national level gun. That's what this gun is right out of the box. So I've got a couple other Berettas here. This is a bone stock uh, 92G. I've got a Centurion and I'm not making direct comparisons. I wanna point out some subtle changes that Ernest Langdon did to this gun to make it the special uh, tool that it is. We'll start out on the slide. So this slide is the Vertec uh, M9A3 slide. It's got forward and aft slide serrations. Those come from Beretta. It's the G model, so that means it's decock only. I'll show you on this 92G. If you, gun's empty. If you were shooting and the gun was in single action mode and you wanted to go back to double action mode and say holster, you would hit the uh, decock button and what you'll notice that button did not stay down or it cannot be made to stay down and immediately pops up which allows this gun always to be fired in double action mode extremely safe to carry unlike uh, uh, say a striker fired gun 
that that uh, requires a shorter trigger pull. This gun requires a heavy, deliberate trigger pull. So it's very, very safe in carry mode without a technical safety. So when you hit the decock lever on these G models, goes forward, but allows you to immediately draw the pistol. And why they make this is there are guys that forget to take their safety off training issues or because they go from decock to safe and maybe forget where they're at, this gun always coming out of the holster is gonna be ready to go. So it's got that uh, ambidextrous decocking lever on it. Front dovetail sight, I know you can order this. Ameriglow makes some sights for it. Uh, on the website, you've got some different sight options. This is how we've got it outfitted. Uh, ramped front with serrations on there. This sight is uh, .110 wide. It's got a uh, uh, blacked out rear target sight with serrations as well on the rear. This, uh, talking about the upper still, has a stainless steel guide rod. If you'd like, we can take a quick peek at that. Take down on this gun, extremely simple. Push the button, turn the lever. We're gonna pop the slide apart so you can see the stainless steel guide rod. And by the way, this has got a stainless steel barrel with a target crown. Can you see that? Target crown on that stainless barrel. Beautiful, beautiful barrel. Let's get this guy put back together so we can continue to manipulate it. Now that we've got this gun apart, we might as well take a look at some of the lower. So talking about the frame, like I said, this is an M9A1 frame with a few slight modifications. A couple of them are really, really subtle. So if you shoot a Beretta a lot, I've got this Centurion here, she's cleared out. This edge right here, right here, if you can see that. So the bottom of the trigger guard has a wide sloping radius, but right at this point, there is a sharp edge right there, that edge. And that is the same edge you're going to find on this bone stock 92G. So after lots of shooting, that can really start to dig into the edge of your fingers, especially coming in and out of the holster. So what Ernest did, you it, if you can zoom in, it's very subtle. That edge has been eased just a little bit, but I tell you what, after uh, a long shooting class, a long day of training, that little bit is going to mean the difference between you being able to show up the next day without a bunch of band-aids on you. That very fine chamfered edge right along both sides of the trigger guard. Very cool. Something else, uh, we've got the uh, extended magazine release. Some guys don't like these. I like them. If you look at it compared to a more stock style uh, mag release, this is what I got used to on my Wilson Combat, so I'm gonna keep that on there and, and enjoy using it. Something else about these grips uh, that is really cool, if you look at it, you think, okay, whatever, it's some wood grips, until you pay attention to details, details. And what you're gonna notice is the checkering, if we can call it that, the checkering in the grip is made in a fashion, two things. One, other grips like this on the market do not have checkering for the most part above the grip screw. And I'm not making this video to directly compare this to Wilson Combat, but there's just a lot of things that we can compare. So here's the grips that come on uh, Wilson Combat. You see the checkering stops above the grip screw. Well, if you shoot a lot, you know, and you know from watching us guys, that we wanna have a grip up high. We don't control the gun down here. We control the gun up here. That's where the meat of our hand is. So having this, this texturing up here where the meat of our hand is, is going to help us control the gun in recoil. Also, the angle, or I guess angle's a good word, the angle and the uh, sharp edges, they're not sharp, but the edges that protrude and get purchase on your skin are cut in a fashion that they're gonna help the gun from moving like this. I don't care about this this kind of movement, and a lot of checkering is done kind of omnidirectionally 
I've never had a problem where a gun wants to just rise up out of my hand. What does want to happen, especially if I get sweaty, is this wants to happen. The gun wants to rock against your skin. This, the vertical stri striations here, lock into your hand really, really nicely. So some more good thinking uh, with that. Cost was a factor. Like I said to you at the opener here, they didn't want to do things that, that jacked cost to make this gun uh, not available to the masses. So the trigger job that he did on here, it's got a 13 pound uh, spring in it. Before I put this gun back together, I want to point out, I'm going to hold this up, Drew, so that you can see this. If you, if, if, you don't shoot a lot of Berettas, you may not notice this unless somebody points it out to you. But, where's a good spot for you to see this angle along the edge here, Drew? That slight bevel, that very slight bevel. So, why did Ernest have that slide milled like that? Well, let me show you. So, we know that we want to get up as high, as, as high and as tight uh, up on the grip as possible. Well, Ernest had the rear of the slide had that slight bevel cut into it so that as you've got that high grip you don't have those backsides of the rails digging railroad tracks into your hand as it as it reciprocates and that's one of those things that's going to be contingent upon your hand if we look compared to a, a standard rear slide you see so we see this one is stock the rear of that slide so while it's not sharp, it's sharper than how this has been just so gently eased. That can make the difference between you cutting your hands up while training. If you have meaty hands, like our friend John Knapp has such big thick hands, even with a good sized beaver tail like these guns have, that is going to help alleviate the railroad tracks from getting cut into your hands. The infamous Glock slide bite for you Glock shooters. Very cool. So tons of stuff uh, well thought out in the design of this gun. As we are working our way through it, one of the things that's gonna stand out to you after you pick it up is just how silky smooth that action feels. My friend Les Pepperoni, Les Kizmartoni is his real name, another Grandmaster shooter, when he got me uh, Basically, I fell in love with this with this gun, not this gun, but the 92 a number of years ago. Les said, it'll make you a better shooter. And I'm like, okay, whatever, fine, I'll shoot it for a while. And what he meant, it took me a little while to, to get it, but the guns, that double action and that single action, you learn to really get a nice smooth trigger press, which once you're afforded that single action, it is really easy to make a good hit at various distances because you've learned to really press through that double action. To folks that say, oh, double singles, that's stupid. You gotta learn two trigger presses, pish posh. You get in your car, you work through various gears, you work through all kinds of different motions. It's really not that big a deal. I think it's a, it's a, it's an excuse people use because they don't shoot the double action well. So they say, oh, that double single, it's, it's too hard. You shouldn't have to learn two trigger presses. It's not a big deal. Once you learn how to actually use the gun, you come out of the holster, you make that first shot, the slide, uh, or rather the hammer uh, stays to the rear and you get really nice single action trigger presses. So this gun, we're gonna put it through its paces, we're gonna run it hard, we're gonna see what it's made of, and I'm willing to bet that it's gonna stand up to everything that we can throw at it. It's a great option for somebody that's looking for a classy gun, looking for a gun that's built with pride in the USA by hand, looking for a gun that is really gonna stand the test of time. Folks that are just hell-bent on the plastic guns that are out there, which I've got them all, I love them, this is another animal, and if you learn how to shoot a DA, like I said, double action, it will pay dividends in all of your shooting. This gun ships with three magazines. Uh, these are qu quality Beretta mags. I've got one temporarily glued down. Look at how easy they fall free of the gun. Just wanna make sure that you guys see that. Even in a position that is not ideal for a mag release, 
Those mags fall nice and free of the gun. There is a very gentle easing of the magwell. Gentle easing of the magwell to help aid uh, reloads. And as I told you, this one ships with that oversized button. I don't have an issue. I've, guys have told me that they don't like that. It stands too proud. I don't have an issue with it. And for me, if this gun's at slide lock, it's really easy to reach that button and push it. See that? I'm shooting, gun goes to slide lock, drop away, I can do my load, and then good purchase on that slide lock lever if you're one of those guys. If you want to grab the gun overhand, you can do that. A lot of options with this gun. The Elite LTT, which if you didn't figure it out, stands for Langdon Tactical Technologies. Built with pride, and it makes me feel warm and fuzzy to have it in my hands. Let's see what she does on the range. Let's see what this Langdon Tactical Beretta will do on the range. We told you all about it at the shop. Let's see what she does. Got some nine millimeter Supervel we're gonna load up in this bad boy. Start off on double action. I've got a four inch target out there. I'm at about eight yards, seven and a half, eight yards. I'm just gonna slow fire a little bit. I'm gonna work through the double action. I wanna feel that double action on its own. So I'm gonna decock each time so I can feel that double action. Here we go. Nice. That's a nice, nice double action trigger. Yeah, I got no problem working through that double action. I'll fire one more in double, because we're all into that four inch circle, and then I'm gonna work a couple in the single action mode. All good hits in that four inch circle. It feels great. Let's do a tack reload here out of my Neo mag. Yeah, that single action's nice. Come back to the holster here, work a few draw strokes, see how that feels. Feels good. Good center hit. Try that again. I've got Safari Land sending us an ALS for this, which I'm excited to get. Right now, I have, uh, a couple great holsters for it. This one is from Mastermind. I've got a holster from uh, Spencer Keepers. He makes probably one of my favorite holsters uh, for the 92. And then JM uh, Custom Kydex. They all make good holsters uh, for this gun. If you're looking at me hesitating as I'm coming out, it's because I'm shooting a four inch target. I'm not just whacking away at a silhouette. All right, so I ran down and grabbed that target. I did have one I pulled on the upper target. Just wanted you guys to see what we were doing. I just put a fresh USPSA target up. I run a build drill that's six shots from concealment. Just trying to work the fundamentals with this gun, making sure I have a good uh, press, uh, press out from the holster, good safe draw stroke, and of course hits on the A zone. So let's see what that looks like. All right, those were all hits. We'll do that again. Here we go. All hits. We had a reload in there, unexpected, because I didn't I didn't uh, top off, which was okay. We've got all, those were all A-zone hits. I'm happy with that. We'll show you that target in a minute. The thing I want you guys to think about with this blaster, and I'll do one mag dump here real quick. I want you guys to see that target. With this gun, it's, it's everything a Beretta should be. It's got parts smoothed out, as we told you, uh, so they don't rub on you and cut on you. This is the G model so that you can decock 
decock it and uh, not have a safety that's going to accidentally get bumped on. So every time you come out of the holster, you're going to be able to fire the gun. Excellent blaster. Uh, awesome, awesome accuracy potential. This thing will just put bullets on top of bullets if you pay attention to what you're doing. Ernest Langdon really knocked it out of the park with this one. So here's that target that we just shot. That one is a line cutter, so I'm gonna take it, but I wanted you to see it before I dump a magazine into it. So uh, that was the two bill drills, one with a reload that we just shot. I'm gonna throw this back up and we'll just dump a mag so we can see how this gun uh, uh, runs in recoil at speed. Here we go. I got no ammo. All right, I'm gonna run down and grab that. I have about eight bullets in a group like this big just over the A zone. Which, you know, here's the thing. I wasn't aiming there. This, I've been shooting Glock so much, I'm just not seeing my sights the same. I'm not gonna hate where these are, but uh, this is where I was aiming. So that's six rounds right there. I was uh, getting on the trigger before I had drove the gun back down. So accuracy potential is definitely there, but in this instance, I need to get back into the groove with the Beretta to drive that sight back flat uh, because, of course, you can see I was pressing the trigger faster than I was driving it back down. So if you see that as you're shooting, that's probably what's happening. Your finger's moving faster than your ability to uh, uh, drive the gun back to the target. So what do I always tell you? Don't press the trigger unless you see your sights. Maybe we should set this up and do it one more time so I can redeem myself. I'll paste it up. Do 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 Just run through a magazine into the A zone here at eight yards. See what it looks like. I'm I'm looking for. Putting my sight back on the target, I want to feel the sweet Beretta, smooth as Italian. Stick it. Here we go. Ready? All right. Those were all good A zone hits. I slowed down a little bit from the last time. And what I really was trying to do was make sure that my sight was on what I wanted to get a hole in. I'll grab that target. And the point here isn't, oh, Mickey's great, or oh, the gun is great. The point is that this Beretta that Ernest tuned up will definitely get the job done as long as you will. Repeatable grip, put your sights onto the target, press the trigger straight to the rear. Nothing crazy. That's not some kind of like, uh, superhuman feat by any means, but you can run a, guard, a gun pretty good and hard if you're paying attention to what you need to. If you order one of these, I suggest you have the trigger job done. This thing is totally safe to carry. It's not tuned to some unsafe specs. Ernest himself puts in the Wilson Combat Transfer Bar. It has a 13 pound uh, chrome silicone hammer spring, and it's slicked up where it just feels very buttery smooth. You're not feeling any hiccups as you're moving through uh, the, the trigger. Stainless steel trigger itself, if I didn't cover that earlier. The lanyard that you're used to seeing on most 92s is gone. So the lanyard, the lanyard loop is removed with a plug that's in there, which is pretty neat. You know, a lot of us are not putting a lanyard on the gun. This can also be ordered in a carry package where there's a lot of uh, rounding done on the gun. Any sharp edges have been removed. I'm so used to carrying these as is, I'm a-okay with it, but there's one that's, uh, that you can order it with a lot more easing. Of course, you've got the rail, so if you need to put a light or something like that on there, you can do that. Guys, if you're into this blaster, check out LangdonTactical.com. LangdonTactical.com. Tell Ernie I sent you. Matt, don't. He might hang up on you. <laughs> yeah.